Welcome to this photography workshop. My name is Dean. I am a Leicestershire based photographer and today I'm just going to show you a couple of uh, techniques and tips to create some interesting images using either your smartphone or if you're lucky enough your point and shoot camera or DSLR at home. So today we're going to look at two different photographic techniques. We're going to have a little look at composition. So composition is how you arrange things in your photographs to make sure that you get the best possible photograph you can. And the second technique we're going to look at is freezing movement. Now photography really is all about capturing movement and freezing movement and freezing things, that moment in time. Um, so we're going to look at a little setup that you can do at home using some objects and some water to try and capture some movement. So for the first activity, all you're going to need is a mobile phone or your camera if you prefer to use that and just a little bit of imagination. Um, so first I'm going to just discuss a little bit about the composition technique we're going to use and then I'll introduce you to our activity. Now a lot of photographs use a composition technique called the rule of thirds. Now the rule of thirds gets you to imagine that your scene is split into nine equal squares. And what you're aiming for is to rest areas of interest anywhere that your lines cross or within one of the grid squares. So we can see from this example that the house in the foreground is roughly on one of the intersecting lines of our grid. You can see in this image that I've arranged the hay bales on the lowest horizontal line just so that my horizon line is not dead centre in the image. It just gives you that little bit more visual interest. And I've employed the same technique in this final image. I've kept the horizon line on the lowest horizontal line, but I've also tried to make the humps of the hills on the right hand side of the image sit on the intersecting lines. However, there are no hard and fast rules about composition. Sometimes a composition just works and it doesn't follow any of the kind of rules. So don't worry too much about it. These are just kind of little things to bear in mind whilst you're making your images. So to your first challenge or task, um, what I would like you to do is play photo bingo. So using what you've just learned about composing images, I'd like you to go around your house or your garden, um, anywhere close to you, and find the following. So as you can see from our bingo sheet here, we've got a number of different types of images I'd like you to make. So uh, some, some of these are asking you to photograph different types of materials. So we've got wooden material or a material that's transparent or reflective. Um, or you might want to photograph an object that's bendy or blue or low down. But what I'd like you to remember is, is when you're photographing these items, think about where they are in the frame in your photograph. So think about that composition technique, the rule of thirds and how you can make that apply to your photographs. Also as well, think about filling the frame. So if you're photographing something that's patterned, don't photograph it necessarily from distance. Maybe get really close up to it and see if you can photograph the texture on there or the pattern close up and make a really interesting abstract image. So now is probably a good time to pause the video Go off and do the activity, spend as much time as you like on it, you know, take your time, don't feel like you have to rush, there are plenty of different items on there, see if you can get them all, see if you can make your images the best they can possibly be, and then I'll see you back here when you have finished that task. So hopefully you managed to get around and photograph most of the things on your bingo list. So what should we do with the images once you've got them on your phone or on your camera? Well, it's time to share them and it's time to present them in a way suitable for sharing. So what we're going to try and do is mimic our bingo sheet. So to mimic our bingo sheet, we are going to arrange our photographs in a grid. So if you've used your phone to take your photographs, this is a relatively straightforward process. All you need to do is jump on the App Store or Google Play Store, depending on which type of phone you're using and download a collaging app. Now I've found one for Android. I use an Android phone um, called InCollage. 
Now, In Collage is a free app. It does contain adverts, so just be careful what you're clicking. Um, you can pay for versions, but obviously you'd have to ask your parents or guardians um, if you were okay to do that. It's very, very simple to use. Just open up the app, select Grid. You'll likely see an advert. If you do, just close that advert, bypass that advert. Um, once you've clicked Grid, though, you should hopefully be presented with a screen that allows you to choose some photographs to put into your collage. So select all the images that you want from your bingo sheet. Now you can arrange them in different layouts. You can pick different ways to present them. You can have some bigger, some smaller. You do that just by clicking the Layout tab and then selecting. I'm going to go for this one. And then you can choose whether to make your border bigger or smaller um, or thicker or thinner. And you can also choose the background color of that border as well. So you can just go into this color picker and select a color. I'm going to go for red. Once you're happy with everything, click the tick and then click the save button up at the top corner of the screen. That will save your image and then you can either save that to your phone or you can share it. Now I do both. I would save one to your phone which you can then show to us and also I'd, I would you know, send it to yourself or post it on social media if you've got a social media account. There's lots and lots of different apps you can use it with. So hopefully you managed to get a lot of images that you are happy with and you've arranged them into a grid. I can't wait to see what you came up with from your photo bingo exercise and hopefully we'll get to see those very soon. So on to our second task. So this time we're going to try and freeze some movement in a photograph. So you're going to need some objects for this task. Um, you are going to need something that you can fill with water but you can also see through so i've got this plastic vase you might be able to use i don't know a, a drinking glass um you may have a, a taller vase than this you may have an old fish tank that you don't use anymore that's just just around but you, you need to be able to fill it with water and also the top ideally needs to be big enough for you to drop in an object now that object could be anything really um i've done this before with pieces with pieces of fruit um, I've got things like plastic toys, um, novelty erasers are sometimes good. You just, you just want something that when you drop it in the water, it's going to create a bit of a splash. Also for this task, you need to try and keep your camera as steady as possible. Now, I'm going to use mobile, my mobile phone again for this, this activity. Um, you can buy little attachments for your mobile phone. So you can fix that to it and this will fix onto a, a standard tripod head. So if you've got a tripod at home, you could probably pick something like this up relatively cheaply on eBay. Other than that though, most mobile phone cases come with the option of standing up the phone. So if you, if you kind of maneuver the case in such a way the phone will stand up and um, so that's also a cheap option if you've already got a, a case that will do that if not though don't worry you can simply just hold the phone and brace it up against something sturdy so on a table or you know if you lean up against a wall and push the camera up against the wall you can you can steady the camera but you've really got to try and make it as steady as you possibly can and here is the basic setup for our image We've got a vase in the background here, about half full with water, and we're going to drop an object into the water. So in this case, it's a rubber duck. And I've set up a smartphone just on a tripod to keep things nice and steady. 
And all you've got to try and do is photograph the object as it hits the water and creates the splash. And hopefully we will freeze that movement and freeze all the droplets of water at the decisive moment when everything is in the right place. So let's give it a go. So the phrase, the decisive moment, was coined by a famous photographer called Henry Cartier-Bresson. Henry Cartier-Bresson was a street photographer who was a master at waiting for all of the elements in his image to come together at just the right point. Now, unlike modern photographers, Cartier-Bresson was taking photographs at a time when digital photography didn't exist. And Cartier-Bresson didn't really have the benefits of what we call burst mode. Now, burst mode is found on a lot of digital cameras and it allows you to take lots and lots of photographs, one after the other, very, very quickly. Now, while you're trying to do your splash images, you may want to use burst mode on your camera. Now, if you're using a digital SLR camera, there's normally a little setting on there that allows you to take lots of photographs all at once. If you're using, say, your Android phone or your iPhone, normally you just hold down the button that takes the photograph and that will take a lot of images one after the other. So you should be able to get your perfect frozen image. However, in other photographic examples, simply being at the right place at the right time can help massively. So having burst mode is great. It can, it can aid your photography, but you still need to have that eye. You still need to be in the right place at the right time in order to have a chance to capture that perfect image. So there we go. That's a relatively simple technique. Uh, it just takes a little bit of time to set up and you need to make sure that you're using things like burst mode if you've got those available to you on your particular phone or camera. Some tips to bear in mind for this activity. Again, make sure that your camera is ste as steady as possible um, because you don't want to add camera shake to your image because that's just going to make things blurry. And try and use a room that is quite light and bright or even go outdoors. You know, you need as much light as possible to help the camera to work as quickly as possible to capture the movement. So you'll notice that I did mine in my bathroom because it's, it's tiled in white tiles so the light is is quite bright in there um, but yeah outdoors is definitely great that will help you just get as much light as you can into the scene i hope you really enjoyed those two activities and i hope they've given you some inspiration for your own photo projects maybe i'm really really looking forward to seeing what you send in to pedestrian and i hope that we'll be able to get together soon in person and do some more photography together take care and we'll see you soon